are going to start our event since the time is already past 730. Um, we will give you the uh, tab for you to sign up the form later, as one, one, one by one. And now I'm proudly to introduce you today today's speaker. Uh, Li Zhao is a very experienced guy in software defined radio. The topic here is going to give us is about leaving the wheel of software defined radio. I guess it will be quite interesting because this thing is not easy to see in your in your day life. Uh, not 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 say e not easy to see, to see. You might not get more handy things like this one, but usually you use it when you are using a mobile phone or something. Now let's welcome Li Zhao to start his uh, speak. Hardware defined. So, what, 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 what's the meaning of hardware? 
to understand this concept. Uh, let me let us first see what are the uh, building blocks of a radio. Here I show you a example of a analog radio. So for analog radio, it has some. This this is a receiver. Uh, has some basic blocks such as antennas, amplifiers, and a modulator and a filter. And uh, 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 here I show example of a speaker. And uh, this amplifier is just to increase the amplitude of a signal. That is to increase the signal strength. And uh, this demodulator is try to move the signal from the radio frequency to baseband. Here, baseband contains the original signal that has a useful information. And uh, you cannot transmit the baseband signal to the air. You need to modulate to a carrier. And this, is, this carrier signal is called RF. So this demodulator is trying to convert the RF signal to baseband. And uh, later you do some processing on the baseband signal to get the information you want. And this filter is just uh, additional processing. Try to remove some ammonia frequency components to increase your reception performance. So for the, uh, the last slide is about analog radio here. Uh, people start to use, recently, uh, not, not recently, nowadays people usually use digital implementation to, to build the radios. So they introduce a ADC or DAC into the radio system, try to <coughs> improve the reliability of a radio. So the difference is that uh, the architecture is similar. You have a Read I I part try to convert signal from I uh, uh, to baseband, and then you have a baseband section to do the baseband processing. But the difference here, uh, digital radio introduced ADC and DAC try to digitize the signal, and uh, the baseband <coughs> section just process the digital signal. So, uh, it seems that the radio is pretty com complicated. Uh, they have many components, but uh, usually you can see they are radio, the radio size is pretty small. The key reason is that they are usually implemented in hardware. Here, hardware, I mean, they are made into chipset. Or, uh, we call it application specific integrated circuit. So the function, radio function, are implemented in a special design circuit. Here I can show you an example. This is a communication <coughs> of our Apple iPhone 5. And uh, this board has many ethics. And uh, you have an application processor, and then these two are uh, radio related. They are used to, to communicate with the cellular network. You can see these two in red color and in the green color. And this is zoom in picture. You can see these two uh, radio uh, acid chipset. Uh, you can see they are very small, pretty small, and uh, with these two components, you can communicate with your base station. So, it's time to introduce the concept of a software defined radio. I copy this one from the Wikipedia. I think it's a uh, it's, it's a it's a good uh, definition. So, what is software defined radio? It's a radio communication system where components that have been typically implemented in hardware are instead implemented by means of software on personal computer or embedded system. 
So here the key key words is previously everything is implemented in hardware and nowadays they are implemented in software some components. So uh, to understand the concept, let's get back to this figure. The architecture of the SDR is somehow similar to the digital radio, but the key difference key difference is here. First, the signal are digitized immediately after the noise, uh, low noise amplifier. Here, after this this part, the signal up immediately digitalized and later after digitalization and uh, you can uh, the signals are processed entirely in software and uh, this part is programmable because you are implemented in software and you can change you can uh, change this part to define your function and in addition the other part now is configurable because uh, <coughs> you you need to change 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 the radio behavior on your demand so the hardware part should be configurable. In old days, the radio is just to implement a particular function, so the parameter is fixed. You have a fixed frequency. You have a fixed bandwidth. Uh, now you you uh, because you you may have you. Software may define the radio uh, function, so this part should be also be configurable. This is the two key difference. One is the software to implement the baseband processing, the other one is the configurable RF part. Uh, to be honest, the concept of SDI is not new. It has been almost 30 years. This is first introduced, and this link shows some. If you are interested, you can check this website to see uh, some milestone events, and you can see 30 years ago people has already coined this term and try to implement this system. But I want to emphasize here is that while this concept is not new, but only the recently the rapid evolving capability of a digital electronic make SDR possible and accessible to the public. <coughs> so <coughs> you may wonder a uh, question why we need SDR? It must have some advantage, otherwise it's useless, right? So uh, for the asset implementation method, the hardware approach, because everything is in circuit and the circuit is customized, and the, once it's made, it can, the function will never change. But if you are implementing a software, the hardware you can see you can change it, it as a general purpose hardware, and the, the software part is programmable. So you can change its function as you wish and uh, it's more flexible. <coughs> mm. Based on this analysis, uh, I can show you some advantages of using SDR. The first one is about for typing. Uh, to develop a new radio technology, SDR is very useful because uh, before you, you can implement in the, into a chipset, you, you, you need to first implement uh, using uh, some platform, and SDI is a perfect platform to, for you to prototype new technology. And uh, this is extremely useful for researchers. The second application is that uh, you can easily support radio up upgrade. In old days, when a new radio technology is event, it takes a long time to be deployed in real product because making ASIC chipset is, is time consuming. But if you have a software defined radio architecture, you can just up, update your software to implement new radio technology. And 
this this one is extremely useful for communication operators. They can deploy new technology within a short time. And there are more possibilities. Uh, I, I don't need, need, need this name and uh, I can show, give you a, a feeling. You can treat a, the SDI in radio world as a general purpose PC in the PC world. So <coughs> you can think more applications in, uh, using this idea. Uh, there are many kinds of SDI platform. Roughly speaking, uh, they are different in the baseband processing part. One kind of platform is, is based on FPGA or programmable DSP. The FPGA means uh, an integrated circuit designed to be configurable, config, uh, configured the after manufacturing. <coughs> and the DSP is a special design microprocessor with architecture optimized for digital signal processing. And uh, these two uh, uh, architecture has a better performance because uh, you have a circuit and a microprocessor. The performance is, is better, but it's less, less friendly to programmers. The programming is time consuming. But uh, also the cost is very high, so usually they are used in the industry for prototyping. Uh, another method is to use general purpose PC for signal for baseband signal processing. And uh, this processing is based on general purpose CPU such as Intel or ARM CPU. And uh, this one is easier to program because uh, we uh, if you have uh, any programming background you, you you must be able to program. And but this method, uh, if you want to achieve a high performance, it's not easy because the CPU, the general purpose CPU is not designed for signal processing. So uh, this method is mostly used in academic work because uh, also it's because of the, the cost is low. <coughs> Uh, here I show you some pictures of this platform. Uh, here, this is a FPGA-based platform called Warp, and uh, this is a small, small radio board. And this one is is TI. It's made by TI. It's based on programmable DSP. And uh, these two platforms are based on general purpose PC and this one is called Sora, it's made by Microsoft uh, Research Asia and uh, the architecture is <coughs> uh, it's, it's uh, okay so this platform the front end you have a front end try to promote the I signal to baseband and uh, using this PCI PCIe interface try to transfer the baseband signal to to general purpose PC and uh, the baseband processing is in, in general purpose PC. This is the uh, solar. Uh, the architecture of a USB is similar except this transfer interface uh, is using Ethernet. Uh, <coughs> these two are most popular used in, in academic work. Uh, I will spend some time to, to show you the details of this platform. Uh, this is the full name of USRP and the you can uh, as I explained, it's a hardware for sending and receiving forms and the, the people have developed a, a universal driver 
to drive this hardware and it can be run under different operating systems. And this, this figure shows the whole architecture. Uh, you have the hardware and uh, using this driver you can drive it in different systems, operating systems. And on top of this driver, you can use let you you can use MATLAB to drive this hardware. And uh, you can write your own program based on this driver, the IP API, to, uh, to get the raw data and uh, develop your algorithm. Uh, you can also use an uh, open source software called Blue Radio to build your application. And uh, I, <coughs> I will explain some, uh, some details of about Blue Radio because this one is open source. You can download it and uh, just use it. For the lab view and the meta lab, either you need to pay or you need to crack it. <coughs> so for Blue Radio, uh, it's a kind of open source software for building software radio applications. Uh, actually, it's, it, it contains a digital signal processing library. Uh, this library it defines many different blocks and uh, uh, into different categories such as modulation, filter, uh, I.O. and GUI and uh, each block defines a digital signal processing function and uh, when you program you choose suitable blocks and uh, connect them together into a full graph and uh, <coughs> you, you run this full graph and uh, the processing starts automatically uh, usually we the first block is a, is, is a hardware USRP and uh, when it starts it will generate a baseband signal continuously and uh, this signal will be processed by the later box and the, the, the program, home program is a multi-thread program the, each, block, each block is implemented in, uh, in a thread and then they are synchronized to process the, the, the whole baseband signal and the, finally you will produce the, the bit information you want uh, to program this, <coughs> you have three methods. One is a graphic you uh, design tool called GRC. You can draw uh, using this tool to, to construct this flow graph and uh, to start the flow graph. And you can also use in Python to write to, con to construct this flow graph and the start operation. Uh, the lower layer functions uh, that is the implementation of uh, each block each signal processing function is using C++ <coughs> so if you, are, if you want a high performance program uh, you can just use C++ to program everything here is an example of a GRC uh, you have this, uh, this tool and uh, this side uh, has many blocks you, you drag some blocks to here and uh, using line to connect them and uh, click this button you can generate the code automatically and you click this button to uh, start the application this is the uh, programming method of a uh, uh, GRC you can also write a Python example in this way. Uh, you define a top block. This top block is a flow graph, and uh, you you try to define two blocks and uh, connect them together. And in the main function, you just call start run, and the application is started. <coughs> OK, 
Okay. I think uh, that's the introduction of the SDR. Do you have any questions? <coughs> I mean, go too fast. <laughs> I have some questions to ask. Um, it is possible uh, to make a uh, home base of BTS. Uh, for example, I can uh, make using this device to uh, program a uh, GSM uh, core uh, network and then uh, emit the signal. It is work. So you are saying uh, GSM base station? Yes, home make. Uh, yeah. I will is this the data? Yeah. And I will show you. Uh, in For some moment, of uh, fake uh, base station. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, in China, there have many uh, yes, yes. Fake, fake base station. I will introduce here. So, I mean, uh, for the concept of SDR, do you have any question? If no, I will go to the application part. I will show you some example of using this one to hack the RF world. The, the fake JSON base station, yeah. I will answer later. <coughs> okay, so let me continue. So I will show you the first example is that uh, we can use it, this software defined radio tools to build a FM station. And uh, the Blue Radio has already provided this example. You just drag these blocks and connect them into a full buff and uh, start this program and uh, here I can show you this demo uh, uh, we use net view to show this example program actually is implement the, the function of this GRC and uh, after you config some parameter you have a this is a USRP this one and you, you are using Ethernet to try to uh, control this hardware and uh, you specify the frequency you specify the gain and uh, then you can start this Okay. Uh, here I have a radio. choose a voice file and you can, you can see it's transmitting this file to the uh, radio it's finished and you can repeat it to see some other uh, details of this application. And another application is, uh, is uh, people use it, this one to build a GSM based station. And uh, there's an open source software called OpenBTS. And this one implements a GSM AI interface. Uh, and uh, to support voice uh, application, if you want to call phones, they need to install a, need this software to support this voice and the calls. And uh, using this software to support SMS, 
so so yes. Uh, I can show you this. Okay, this video. If I a good discussion of this one. So we'll start this one up and make a call. And this should call the other phone. There it goes. We'll answer that call. And we'll demonstrate audio. There's a little bit of a lag there. Good on this one. And that's uh, kill that call. That's a working uh, USRP setup. Let's start by taking a look at the front of this box. Uh, the uh, most important thing, of course, is, is power, and then you've got some status indicators. Uh, the Ethernet, this is a gay Ethernet port, uh, which we'll use to talk to the radio inside. There's an expansion thing and, and, and stuff having to do with clocks, which we'll talk about later. Um, these are the two uh, outputs and, and inputs for, for uh, receive and transmit. Uh, for the actual radio signals. Uh, so let's pull this thing apart. There's not really much on the back, by the way. Um, I'm taking the screws out of this thing, so I'll pull it apart and take a look at what we're dealing with here. Um, as you can see, there's a, there's a main board below, uh, and then some daughter boards that are sort of snapped on the top, and, and uh, you see these little extenders that go out to the stuff in the front. Uh, generally, the, the idea here is I've got the, the main board, which has the software programmable radio. And then above it, this is the WBX, which is a, uh, a receiver and a transceiver, uh, two different radios that you can uh, drive. And I have them just uh, sent out to the front of the device. Um, that's pretty much it. There's, uh, you know, it's very basic on the inside. You can get some some additional add-ons like a, uh, a GPS clock that, that uh, makes the timing a bit better. The, the, the timer on here is a, 
um, a good, good one, good enough for uh, doing development and research, but probably not good enough to use uh, in the field. You'll want to get uh, a GPS clock, and I'll talk more about why that's really, really important. Um, timing is extremely important in, in uh, radios. Um, so that's the uh, that's the inside of the two tents. So we'll, uh, we'll take a look at uh, setting up and powering it. So now I've buttoned it back up. Let me uh, put some antennas on here, and these are just uh, sort of your your standard uh, uh, antennas that you can that you can get. And these will uh, these actually they're, they're pretty much overkill for what we're trying to do. Uh, but you do want to have an antenna on the uh, transmitter so you don't end up, uh, uh, you know, blowing the thing out. Um, next, we'll put a, uh, some Ethernet in there and get a uh, piece we got that going. And the last thing we're going to do is uh, is give it some power, uh, and it will start up once I once I plug that in. And that's that's pretty much it. It's going to sit there as a, as a closed box and everything else we'll look at is going to be uh, on the screen. So what we're looking at right here is the desktop of the machine that uh, the USRP is plugged into. So what I'm going to do up here, I'm going to run asterisk and I'm going to say uh, very, very verbose uh, and give me a console. This is going to be our our PBX, sort of a VoIP PBX. Um, down here I'm going to run um, SMQ, which is a uh, SMS uh, queuing service. Uh, it's basically a store and forward type service. Uh, and then over here I'm going to do the, um, the magic, and that's uh, OpenBTS, and this is the uh, thing that's actually going to upload the uh, how to talk on a GSM network over to the USRP, and then it's going to set up a um, BTS and run it for me. So, okay, now we've got uh, the BTS going. Uh, if I say Timsies, can show the, uh, these are the different uh, IMSIs that, uh, that have shown up. Um, on my network, and I've uh, got two phones right here. Uh, these are, uh, right now you can see it's set to emergency calls only. So I'm going to go into settings, I'm going to go into wireless networks, and uh, go to mobile networks, and find the network operators. That's going to take a little bit of time, so while that's going, and see what this one has figured it out. This one is sort of in the same scenario as we just turn this up. So uh, this is <clears throat> this is the first time. Well, this one seems to seems to have registered actually. I think yeah. So it's test sim. So that one's registered and looks like this one is up as well. So I don't have to pick a network. It kind of figured it out automatically. Um, so now, with any luck, what I'll be able to do is place a call. So I'm going to call this phone, just like you saw before. Um, there it goes. You see the asterisk console. And this call, this phone is ringing. And we can pick it up. And now we're talking. And if I can make this thing work, there we go. So you can see that that works. Um, the next thing we'll do, really quickly, is uh, send an SMS. We'll see how that works. Now you see an asterisk, everything is uh, kind of hung up and, and shut down. Uh, I'll go to the messaging service and I will create a new message and it's going to go to um, Nexus One, that guy, and I'm going to say, hi there. And I'll hit send. We should see it show up. There it is, and the, whoop, there we go. It was pretty loud. So we'll check that and see what message we got. Sure enough, there's a message, and it says hi there, and uh, I can I can reply to it and say hello, just so we have something different. Um, I'll hit send, and 
we should see it again in the thing, and there we go. We've sent a message back and forth uh, via OpenBTS. Um, and that's basically how it works. Well, okay. So this video shows uh, the operation of the, uh, the, the GSM base station with the US Army and the Blue Radio. And Okay. So actually it runs a security issue. Uh, people can use this tools this these tools. It's not expensive. The cost uh, I guess is Less than uh, 20k RMB, uh, and uh, they, they can use this one to build a fake JSM base station, and uh, they can use to send the spam SMS message to you, and uh, if can also provide a voice or a SMS service. You can intercept your calls and your SMS. And actually, people has already using it in mainland China. I think I also receive some strange SMS sometimes. So, but you can say GSM is a second generation radio. You, you may say, okay, I will not use JSM, I use third generation or fourth generation, but they can use some jamming signal, try to block your three generation or fourth generation uh, connection, and uh, your phone will revert back to JSM. And uh, actually, it's, it's hard to, to prevent uh, from your side. Uh, only operators can do something, try to find this fake base station and uh, do something. So, here, uh, there's another video giving a more examples of the application of, of the USRP, and, uh, such as proving a restaurant pager system. And you can also Try, you, you use this one to hack a RFID system, uh, pretend to be a valid RFID tag. And uh, also, mm, you can use this tool to monitor, to check the aircraft uh, behaviors. If you can, uh, if you're using this equipment near an airport, and uh, if you're interested, you can look at this video. It's pretty interesting. So that's, that goes. If you want to using uh, software defined video tools, you can uh, first buy a programmable uh, hardware. And here I list some 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 hardware. And uh, this table shows the comparison of these different kinds of hardware. And uh, you can see the price and cost. Uh, actually, it's not not cheap. It's a, a bit expensive. <laughs> three hundred k US dollar. These three kinds of uh, SDR prime phone. And uh, they have some small difference. And, but uh, the cheapest one is still cost three hundred k US dollar. Uh, if you just using use, use this one to receive some signal, you don't want to transmit anything, uh, then you have a, a, a trip choice. This one can only 20 US dollars, but this one can only use for uh, receiving signal, not for transmitting. So once you have a hardware, you, you can write a software. Uh, you can Right on top of a Google radio. And in the, in the internet, there are many open source projects. 
writing a code for many different applications. We can also use NAM. Uh, but I I suggest you 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 should be able you should have some knowledge of digital signal processing and the uh, uh, wireless communication. Otherwise, it's it's pretty difficult <laughs> to use it. <coughs> uh, so this is the last slide. Uh, I think in future the hardware should be less expensive and it should be more powerful. Uh, nowadays, the supported bandwidth is, is, is small and I think in future they should support uh, about 100 megahertz. And uh, the software on general purpose PC should be more powerful. Nowadays, they, they cannot process wideband signals such as the full 20 megahertz even higher, 11, 40 megahertz signals. It's, it's very difficult. <coughs> so another thing is, if you ask me, do uh, SDI have any business opportunities? Uh, my answer is that yes, for some niche application, you can use these tools to, to build a, a self-defined network. It's more secure because you define the network and the motivation, anything you can define. But to replace ASIC product is not much enough because for terminal, for, for smart, such a smartphone, it's pretty small and uh, the power, power is, 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 is limited and the computation is pretty <coughs> slow, so it's not suitable for building terminal using as software defined radio. But for base station it's possible to using <coughs> uh, SDR, but uh, there's a trade-off between the performance and the cost. Uh, actually the Channel Mobile has built a prototype using this general purpose PC to build a base station. But it seems that the performance is not so good. So I, I guess in future they may using a hybrid architecture for, for building a real product. Uh, that's all. Uh, any questions? So maybe let's first thank the speaker. Any uh, questions? Do you have any example of niche application like self-defined network? Mm. People are, I'm pretty sure people are using FPGA to build the network. Uh, Self-defined network? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I, I. So, what do they do on that? They, they use that. Uh, let me see. Okay, I, I can show you uh, offline. Okay. okay. They, they use that to build a, because that one they, they cannot afford to build a chipset, so they are using that one to build, build a sm small size core. Okay. What can you talk to? What is a kind of application, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's Funny question that you asked you. Uh, uh, it is possible to set up two SDR devices, one in US and one in Hong Kong, uh, so that uh, I can receive uh, uh, through the uh, network, <laughs> and then I can 
uh, using the handset to receive the real US signal instead of the uh, roaming signal. It is uh, possible. Uh, the same one is in Hong Kong, one is in the US. Uh, because um, I can use the chip part uh, using the uh, US uh, core weight, uh, no, not uh, roaming core weight, because roaming core weight is very high. Uh, if this uh, SDR is receiving uh, the base station signal from the USA and then full internet transmit to Hong Kong, and this device we transmit the uh, signal to my handset, so that my handset, uh, the carrier uh, will show AT and D. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is uh, possible to build uh, such devices. If your terminal is also SDR, yeah, and uh, you also have a license to use the spectrum. Uh, no need to <laughs> to consider. Okay. Just uh, for uh, me to use the chip power. I think ISM band is possible. You do use your terminal, your SDR as your terminal, and uh, you you try to down you transfer baseband signal over the internet is possible. But you are saying you are you want you want AT and T service. You need to use in license that's from. I know that, but <laughs> uh, exclude the not not consider the uh, how license or house but uh, in. We uh, all it is uh, possible uh, in Hong Kong to receive a real AT and T signal through this uh, SDR device. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think receive signal is possible. You, you just record the signal and you replay it. Yeah. But to build the real network, I mean, you real transmit data, it's not. I think it's not possible because the protocol has some. Constraint. constraint. You you transmit something. You, you need to synchronize the network. Synchronize. This is the time delay between the yeah, Hong Kong yeah. and USA. The yeah yeah. This one is oh, may may not possible to build uh, this uh, very high uh, home base of base station that receive a real AT and T signal. If you transmit data, I think no. If you just have a phone, I think yes. And if you build everything on SDR, I think it's possible. This is my So, any other questions? You mentioned that we can. Uh, intercept the SMS and the voice call, but uh, I remember that the voice call signal uh, sig is encrypted. But how can we decrypt it? Do you know GSM encryption? Everything is already cracked. Which everything? It's A five one. A five one. I think yeah. it's already cracked. Yes, yeah, thank you. And uh, in addition, because. You are connecting to my base station. I can choose not to use encryption. So, now how about uh, if I uh, didn't connect to the base station and uh, can I intercept the SMS on this phone? GSM, you can log it in the crack because the encryption everything is crack. You can also decode anything. But in real time, I don't know whether it can. You, you need to spend more time. And actually, I, I, uh, I have tried to decrypt the SMS and, and uh, it works, but the voice call, I don't know how to do it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know either. But I think since you already know the algorithm, you, you should be able to. <laughs> If you do things right, yes, I, I think some uh, open source project doing doing the decryption of SMS, but I didn't say anything about the voice call. So, how far to uh, the signal range if you are transmitting just your homemade device? Uh, depends on the amplifier. <coughs> so, uh, 
if you have a powerful amplifier, yeah. range is can be very really overwhelming. If I want to broadcast something uh, to the whole city, so how, how much should I spend to get a power enough amplifier? I don't know the exact, but I think for the base station part, <coughs> I mean, base station already. You can you can buy the equipment used in this station, and then I think that's no one. It's not not cheap. You still need to pay some money. Yeah, not normally the base station is very huge, but in volume, but okay, it's not very small. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the ground sets so, up, we actually need to on the roof of some. The, the base station, the the one is frequency. Frequency determines the size of antenna. <coughs> the second one is amplifier. Uh, usually, the amplifier is not so huge. All you see is the antenna. Antenna is huge. So, amplifier is usually is not so huge. Size is smaller. So, if I want to broadcast the signal in a suitable frequency, so the antenna could be small. Yeah. And yeah. that would be a very powerful amplifier. So that uh, nobody would have thought that I have a base in my in my house, but I have to broadcast the signal to both it. I, I think if I have enough money. Yes. But you need to be careful because when you broadcast you are already exposed to your position. People the police can listen to your broadcast and look at you. <laughs> but but what if I increase it? But so uh, 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 based by given location based on the the signal, right? It's not based on the content of the signal. It's uh, based on. They can try to locate the destination. Since you are broadcasting your the signal, right? Yeah. You can receive it and then you can locate you where you broadcast. And the even if they can not decode the message inside. The can try to locate your position. Well, if, if, if we do that intentionally, then... Oh, that's a, I think it's difficult. You will turn it off sometimes, you turn it off, and you move it. And it's, it's very difficult. So, so how much does the amplifier have? I want to check the website. So, that's going to be a manual. I guess it should be K K K K to to twenty K. You mean twenty thousand? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So if we get to know, ah, uh, let's just let's let's just speak again. Oh, yes. oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is the minimum system requirement? Uh, for building uh, two G GSM, three G SSPA, and four G LTE uh, PC based uh, SDR. Yeah. You mean the uh, minimum? Minimum uh, CPU requirement, for example, oh. uh, dual core Pentium three, Pentium four. No. For the two two generation, the normal CPU is enough. The example, the video uh, showing don't use ten percent of the CPU. 10%. 10 percent. This is one call, one, one to one. Uh -huh. if ten will be twenty. Ten call. Uh, okay, ten call. Few call or quick call uh, only use ten percent system resources. Uh, uh, Your PC. The, the video said if you have two phones communicating with each other, you only use five percent of the four call CPU. Four call CPU. Uh, for the fourth four generation LTE, uh, there's a project, a very good programmer, and use a i7 core, i7 CPU to build a LTE base station. I can show you the website. <laughs> they, they, oh, they don't open source it, they sell, sell the software. <laughs> Okay, so in that case, is uh, how, 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 in, in what matter for this course? So it's based on the uh, direction and the uh, yes, increase yes. of the stress. <coughs> direction. 
uh, you can use, for example, you can use multiple re antenna receiver as a locate of the transmission dimension lines. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's think of a speaker. Um, if you still have other questions, we can go to another room uh, and have more discussions. And we can also have some drinks there. Okay. So thank you for coming.